Social Awakening was the story of how I had a near-death experience in 2012, and basically I smashed into a rock wall on my mountain bike. I made a very poor assumption, and as a result, I left my body momentarily. I traveled with my guides on the other side, and I was shown very clearly why we're here and what life is about, and I decided to come back into my body and to reinstate with my physical self with the intention of coming back to this earth, to this reality, and to sharing my story with anyone who's looking for a deeper purpose and insight into our lives. And that is exactly what I've done through the book. I wrote this book for everybody who's interested in exploring spiritual concepts and ideas that concern our existence and why we're here. What is our purpose? Where do we go when we die? Who am I? And these are big questions, but not all of us care to search for those answers. I'd say that the central message is that we are all eternal beings and that we have the ability to manifest all that we desire. But in order to do this, we need to recognize that we need to realign with who we are. We need to realign with our source and our spirit. And once we do, we can take full control of our lives. The thing that I've found in terms of the readers finding value from this book is that they now realize that we are all supported. We have this immense amount of wisdom and guidance that we can tap into at any given moment from the non-physical realm, from the, this universal intelligence that surrounds us. And for the most part, we forget that it's there. But once we remember, this is the, this is where we can really realign with who we are and make full use of our lives in, in a very deep sense. I'd say that I Can See Clearly Now, written by Wayne Dyer, would be the best example of that. It was a book that was written simultaneously to, to my own, and both write about significant quantum moments that we experience in our lives. So, for example, in A Soulful Awakening, I wrote about experiences in my life that were very profound and had opportunity for growth, and this is what life is all about. I Can See Clearly Now was written from the exact same perspective, and the idea is to help the reader remember that life is a big learning lesson, and when we take this idea and really apply it to our life, we build opportunities where we can look at our life as, as nothing but an opportunity for growth. Well, I crashed into a rock wall on my mountain bike and <laughs> died momentarily, saw what, was, what life was all about, and awakened to my purpose, to why I'm here. It's not just about working my ass off every day <laughs> and getting nowhere. I was constantly striving for more, and I think we all do. We're constantly looking for more. And when I awakened, it was as a result of this accident and it catapulted me in a higher state of awareness. Not really, no. No, I was very much just in, immersed in my in my work life, going to work, making money, buying things, building my life on what I acquired. And I think this is what a lot of us do. We think that we are defined by what we own, what we have, not by who we really are inside. Well, to me, being spiritually awake is when we have that remembrance that there's a greater purpose, that we're there's more to life than what we generally are here expressing. We, we have this tendency to just work, 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 and play a little bit and work some more. But there's always this feeling of longing for more, that we're missing something. And when we begin to awake in a spiritual sense, we begin to shift our awareness from gaining material objects to concentrating more on how we can serve other people, how we can find passion and excitement in our own lives. What is it that makes us tick? And to be okay with doing those things, to let go of belief systems that other people have imposed on us from the time we were little. Like, for example, you're not good enough to do that, or this is where your aptitudes lie, and, and we start building our life based around other people's belief systems. When we awaken spiritually, we start to do the things that we are really happy about, the things that bring us passion and joy. Intuition was described to me through a, a channeled message after my near-death experience that intuition is the blueprint to our lifetime masterpiece. And I love that because it says it all. It tells us that 
This is our guidebook. Our intuition is guiding us always. The problem is, is that we have a tendency to ignore it. We feel those gut feelings and those impulses, yet at the same time, we ignore them when our mind begins to tell us other, other things and we let our mind control the direction of our life. Once we begin to awaken, we begin to give the credit that our intuition deserves. And when I say that, I mean that when we get those impulses, we follow them because our intuition is there to help us, to lead us, to direct us, to take us in the direction that is best suited for the growth of our entire being. So it's crucial. It's a crucial element in in life is to follow your intuition always. This is a great thing to talk about. I could talk about this for an hour, but I won't. Essentially, what I mean by that is that oftentimes we set our goals on something and we can envision the end result. And when we do that, we limit ourselves. We we say to ourselves, this is as far as this idea can go. Our higher self, that which guides us, our intuition, working our innate self, can see this much bigger picture than what our mind possibly can. So it's okay to have an idea of a direction that we want to go and even possibly see that outcome, but to let go of that outcome actually stopping right there because our higher self can see so much more. So we limit ourselves. When we become insistent on an outcome, for example, I insist right now that I'm going to have this particular job in a year from now, we close the door to all other opportunities that might present themselves. Our thoughts actually aren't so much the problem. The problem is when we decide to focus intently on a particular thought. So we're human beings. We have thoughts that come and go all the time, in and out. We can't really stop that. I've tried. That doesn't really work. When we do that, we try to control our thoughts. We create resistance, and and that doesn't work. The idea is to let thoughts come and go and to reach out and grab the ones that are inspiring, that are motivating, that are positive, and let all the other ones go. As soon as we focus on a thought, we create a vibration that goes along with that thought. When we create a vibration, we then create a feeling, and it's in that feeling state that we begin to manifest. The universe supports us in everything that we do. So as soon as we create a feeling state, the universe will support that because we're free choice beings. So Where we focus our attention is the direction we're going to go. Well, we're all connected. We all came from the same source. We all live to the same source. We all return to the same source. We, especially in in North America, I speak of North America because this is where I live, have come to a point where we live separately, individually. We can take care of ourselves. It's not okay to ask other people for help. We're very independent in that sense. What I'm proposing we do as a collective community is to remember that we are all connected. We're reflections of each other. What somebody is showing me through their own actions is something that I need to look at within myself in order for me to become a better person, to acknowledge that we're here to serve each other, to help each other, to grow together, and to move towards a better community, a global community, And the first step that we need to take in doing that is to remember that we're all one. Well, we talked about this a little bit in a a few questions ago. The biggest thing is to become aware of what we're thinking, how we're thinking, how much attention we're putting on a thought. When we put too much attention on a thought, that thought then becomes an action. And as we know, when you take action towards something, that's the direction you're going to go. If you see your steer your car left, you're going to go left. Wherever you decide to focus your attention is what you're going to manifest. It's that simple. To live an inspired life means to be in spirit. So when you're in spirit, you're aligned with source. You're aligned with your higher self. How do you become aligned with your higher self? You do the things that you're passionate about. If you constantly are living in a state of living out somebody else's dream, you feel resentment, you feel discontent. When you're doing the things that you love to do, if you love to draw, you draw. If you love to write, you write. These are very important things. And oftentimes, we don't take the time to do the things that we love to do. When we're doing the things that make us happy, we in turn encourage other people to do the things that they love to do, and we support them on that. So to be inspired, 
to live an inspired life is to be in alignment with ourselves, with source, and with each other. Well, I, th I think in terms of where we're going as a spiritual community, it's pretty obvious that we are changing as a collective group. There's yoga studios popping out, popping up on every corner. There's juice bars. There's oxygen bars. There's meditation groups. You can fly on an airplane now these days and start talking to the person beside you about channeling and receiving messages from the other side, and you're actually accepted. Years ago, that never, that wouldn't have happened. There's spiritual books. There's workshops. There's lectures. We are awakening as a global community, and it is our responsibility, in my opinion, if we're at this stage in our life, to help represent that change, to help that momentum move forward. We're in a very, very powerful time of change, and it's crucial that we all jump on board and move towards this higher consciousness. I wrote this book to to spread this message, this message that I'm talking about right now. Now is the time, not tomorrow. Wake up today. Wake up today and do the things that you've always wanted to do. There's no sense waiting. Feel feel the power within you to to serve others, to let go of your ego that directs us in so many ways, to stop passing judgment on yourself and others, to really just start living from a place of love where from that place, everything is possible. It's a beautiful, beautiful place to be, and this is why I wrote it. I think that anyone who's interested in moving towards a higher state of living, meaning somebody who's looking for bigger answers within, those questions which I mentioned before, why am I here? What's my purpose? Why do I wake up every day? Where do I go when I die? Where did my dog go who died three days ago? Where did he go? Anyone who's looking for these answers and wants to add to their repertoire of ideas and concepts so that they can come up with their own resolutions, this is, this is who should be reading the book. Anyone who's interested in spirituality.